Welcome to Dan Law, a leader in automotive engineering for embedded systems, serving the automotive community for over 30 years. If you would like to learn more about what we do, please visit our webpage at www.danlawinc.com. This is a brief introduction to Danlaw's engineering solutions for ISO 26262. It may provide strategies for optimizing your functional safety initiatives. So what is functional safety? Functional safety is concerned with the removing of unreasonable risk to individuals caused by potential malfunctions in electrical or electronic systems. It is regulated in most industries where individuals may be hurt or killed if the product fails to keep them safe. Today's safety standards address functional safety of electronic devices used in government and private sectors, such as space programs, aeronautics, medical devices, and nuclear power. Recently, the automotive industry has adopted the ISO 26262 functional safety standard for road vehicles. ISO 26262 provides a formal way to evaluate hazards, identify impacts of safety system failures, identify effectiveness of countermeasures, and ensure those countermeasures are delivered in the final product. It is the gold standard for characterizing safety in automobiles. So why do we care about functional safety in the automotive world? For automakers, broader penalties are on the horizon as new technology increasingly takes over control of the vehicle. In the U.S., the federal government is granting NHTSA broader regulatory control on safety, greater enforcement power through penalties, and has provided NHTSA with the Department of Justice tools to enforce prosecution of criminal negligence. Some examples from the last two years. In 2014, NHTSA levied $126 million in civil penalties against motor vehicle manufacturers. This amount exceeds the total amount of penalties the administration had issued in its entire 43-year history prior to 2014. In 2015, NHTSA levied up to $200 million in civil penalties against an automotive supplier for dangerous airbags. And recently, NHTSA has demonstrated a new enforcement tool, Department of Justice Criminal Enforcement, which fined a car maker $1.2 billion. NHTSA is also seeking to increase the statutory cap of $35 million to $300 million for civil penalties. With increasing liability coming in the next generation highly autonomous vehicles, it is likely that the U.S. government will continue to increase regulations for automotive manufacturers. So what is the impact of ISO 26262 on automotive companies? Engineering organizations can agree that the impact of ISO 26262 on programs is added cost and time. Although the OEM has responsibility for qualifying the integrated system, the overhead cost for qualifying the system is shared between the OEMs and their suppliers. A significant part of this cost is producing the engineering evidences that prove strict safety guidelines were met during the design, development, and testing of the delivered products. The most expensive way to produce the required artifacts is through manual testing, especially when retesting is required. A better way is to use approved test automation tools, but there is a complication. All regulatory safety standards require that software tools used to automate, reduce, or eliminate processes of the safety life cycle must be qualified for their intended use. So if you build your own testing tools, you also have to provide evidence that the tool was thoroughly tested. This is also very expensive for companies that are not in that type of business. Since most companies don't want to incur the cost of qualifying the tools, the best approach is to use approved tools from the start. A qualified tool spreads the cost of qualification over all the users of that tool and is the most economical way to reduce costs. The good news is that Danlaw provides tool qualification kits for commonly used testing tools, most notably the MX Suite Embedded Software Test Environment, the Rapid Test Framework, and Rapid Cover Code Coverage. A tool qualification kit provides formal qualification and support for tool competence level determination. It includes the necessary artifacts for regulatory compliance, including the safety manual, tool operational requirements document, the tool verification and validation procedures, a traceability matrix, 
the peer review documentation, and the technical report from TÜVSUD, the certifying organization for ISO 26262. With Danlaw's tool qualification kits, you can significantly reduce qualification costs while reusing or extending the tool qualification kits for other programs, improving time to market by eliminating manual verification steps, increasing confidence and insurance of regulatory compliance, and being completely supported by experienced independent verification and validation experts. You can find more information on our website. Check us out at www.danlawinc.com. Thanks for watching.